Do you know that 92.8% of people make financial mistakes they don't realize they're making? What if you are among them? What if you are making deadly financial mistakes that will haunt you your entire life? That's the worst thing to ever happen to anyone. You think you're doing the right thing, but the reality is otherwise. Instead of paving your way to financial independence and stability, you unintentionally drown yourself in financial turmoil. The worst part is you do with commitment what is, in reality, the very mistake you should be avoiding. That's when you start to feel overwhelmed. But don't worry, you are not alone. The good news is that you've developed the right mindset by knowing this. But wait, what are the financial mistakes we're talking about? Well, we've researched and studied statistics to compile a list of five financial mistakes 92.8% of people make. Watch the video until the end to know whether you are also making these mistakes. Having said that, let's get started. Number 5. Not having an emergency fund. Imagine you've lost your job and there's no chance you'll find another for the next three months. When you had a job, your expenditures exceeded your income, but now fuel to the fire has been added. You've lost your job or the income source you had is no longer there. How will you survive these next three months and feed your family if you have one? Not only that, but what if there's an emergency even if you have a job? Have you got sufficient money that could help you pass through that emergency? Most people don't think about these scenarios until they find themselves in them. It's the human psyche not to plan for emergencies, but that doesn't mean they don't happen. People might lose their job or can be hit by an emergency where they need instant cash. However, they realize they spent all their salary on non-essential things and now they've got nothing. That's where they feel they should have planned for emergencies by creating an emergency fund. But lucky you, you don't have to be in an emergency to realize how important an emergency fund is. Learning from people's experiences is always better than feeling the pain yourself. But wait. What is an emergency fund in the first place? Simply, it's an amount of money you can use on your rainy days. But you have to make an emergency fund by saving money every month until there's a sufficient amount in the fund. To create an emergency fund, you should keep aside a percentage of your income every month. Or better yet, open a high interest savings account and deposit a percentage of your income. It will start earning you interest until you withdraw money whenever you are in an emergency. No matter how much money you've contributed to the emergency fund, you should never stop. Usually, having an emergency fund that could cover three months of your expenses is considered sufficient. However, it's better you never put a limit to how much money you should have in your emergency fund. The more, the better. Number 4. Spending more than what they earn Let's face it, we're humans, and we love to spend on things we cannot afford. Owning them gives us a pleasure we can never have in life. However, this is what makes a person one of the 92.8% of people making the deadliest financial mistakes. People spend on things that can disturb their budget, but they do it anyway. However, they see all their accounts drained when they reach the middle of the month. No money's left to be spent on essential commodities they need. Not only that, but since they had spent more than they had earned, they have also used credit cards. In other words, technically they've spent a portion of what they will earn in the future. Since they'll be paying credit card bills from their future earnings, but have used credit cards now, it's simply spending the future income. That's the worst financial mistake people make, depriving themselves of what they will earn in the future, creating a gap. But the smart thing to do here is to follow the simple yet genius 50-30-20 rule. This rule says that you should divide your monthly income into three parts. 50% of your income should be spent on your needs, like food, rent, medical expenses, clothing, transport, and electricity bills. 30% of your income can be spent on your wants or non-essential things you love to buy. The remaining 20% has to be saved at all costs. When you do this, you keep yourself at the surface when everyone else is making holes in their boats. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, like and share the video and subscribe to Stealth Wealth Society for more videos on financial topics you would love to know about. Let's continue now. Number 3. Choosing Not to Invest 
ancient Babylon is considered one of the richest cities to ever exist. Perhaps the Babylonians knew a secret that other people of the time didn't know. Every person, no matter whether he was a merchant, a moneylender, a blacksmith, or a craftsman, knew how to make money. And that secret was investing. Babylonians had come to know that instead of working for money, they could make money work for them to earn more money. If a merchant wanted to earn money, he had to sell silk clothes. That's working for money. However, that merchant could invest his money by giving it to the moneylender and getting interest. Without doing anything, the merchant could receive a sum of money. That's the manifestation of money working to make more money. However, today people are scared of investing. But for those who don't, their money speaks for itself. It's surprising to know that even after 2,300 years, investing determines people's financial fate. Instead of just putting your money into a savings account and getting a peanut-sized interest, you should invest so your money can multiply. You can choose to invest in mild or high dividend paying stocks. Instead of using those dividends, you can reinvest them to ensure your money grows over time. That's called compounding, which is exactly what the Babylonians used. But you should know one thing, no matter where you invest, you should balance the profit to risk ratio and diversify your portfolio. Never get attracted to high returns. Never put all your eggs in one basket. Number two, increasing expenditures when income increases. Most people don't realize that their expenditures increase with their income. Even if we keep all variables constant, like the cost of living, but increase the income, a pattern of increase in spending is seen. Often, this is called lifestyle creep or lifestyle drift. The logic behind this is simple. Since people are making more money, spending it on things does not feel like a problem. Even some might say they worked hard for a salary increase, so they deserve to spend it. But that's where you need to be careful. Before your income increases or you feel there are chances, you should already have plans about what you will do with the extra income. Perhaps you can use it to pay your debt more quickly or invest it. And when your income is increased, finally, these goals help you say no to spending on things you don't need. Instead of spending your extra income on expensive things you can afford, you can use the extra money to make small and long-term financial moves. However, that doesn't mean you shouldn't give yourself a prize. A little of that extra income can be used to buy things you love, which works as positive feedback and motivates you. Number 1. Putting off financial planning until life ends Believe us, people know they should be thinking about their finances and start financial planning. But there's a problem. They get themselves mingled in procrastination. Perhaps saying, I'll get to my finances later, might seem harmless, but it's catastrophic in the long run. By delaying financial planning tasks like retirement planning or debt repayment, people risk missing out on valuable opportunities and make things harder for themselves down the road. Plus, the longer you put off these tasks, the longer your to-do list becomes, and the more overwhelming it can feel. People might feel they have the time and should prioritize their daily matters. However, time flies, and the day comes when they're retired. But sadly, they didn't make any financial plans when they could. That's where things get out of hand and everything can fall apart. And that's where you should be careful. To get rid of procrastination during financial planning, break your financial tasks into more manageable, bite-sized pieces. You don't have to tackle everything at once, but ignoring your financial to-do list won't make it disappear. Instead, set aside some time each week or month to check your finances and accomplish important goals. Whether reviewing your budget, setting savings goals, or paying off a credit card, taking small steps regularly can help you build momentum and achieve financial success. Are there any financial mistakes from the list which you are making? If yes, you should avoid it. And if no, then congratulations! You are not among the 92.8% of people who make these mistakes. Let us know in the comment section right below. Are there any more financial mistakes you would like to tell? We'll love to know what you think. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to Stealth Wealth Society and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on financial independence, personal finance, and financial topics you need to know about for a stable financial future. Thanks for watching. And until the next video, stay tuned.